What's up, guys? Artists are one here, and welcome back to a new year and a new episode of the Three Way Dance Wrestling Podcast. And you can't have a three way dance unless there's three of us. So joining me, as always, is Shelby, aka Shubs. This is my show now. For this week only. Really. <laughs> I don't know if I keep borrowing money from you two. Maybe it could be your show. Hell uh, yeah. And joining me as always is Hey Now, Hey Now, Don't Dream It's Over, Nick. Hey now, hey now, do who do do. I fucking don't know the words from there. Crowded house is good. What's <laughs> up, everybody? All right. We took a nice little two week vacation here because one week we're just like, fuck it. Let's just, I just wasn't feeling it that week. We were going to review a movie, but like by the time that I was just like, I need to watch that movie, it was like fucking Wednesday. And that oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I, I was just like, for that shit on Amazon Prime. <laughs> Luckily, it was only like five dollars, but still. Oh, I'm sorry. I paid <laughs> hey, for that I, shit. Was about to watch it, and you're like, oh yeah, let's just take the week off. I'm like, fuck. Sorry. <laughs> at least, at least, least I have at least I have another copy of it though. Next question will be good. Um, and then the next week, um, <clears throat> Nick was out, so I was like, all right, me and Shelby would do like a retro pay per view review, but uh, Shelby was drunk off his ass. <laughs> And then that was on a Monday, and then lo and behold, Wednesday, he's like, I don't think I'm going to be ready tomorrow. I'm like, oh, fuck, Ripley's, you're not going to believe this. You know? <laughs> so we decided to take that week off, too. But we are back, and we got the whole month of January just, just stacked. Because tonight we are going to do uh, Shelby's role-playing thing that he likes to do. Uh, plus, the whole month of January, we're going to be reviewing some uh, retro Royal Rumbles. We're all going to pick one. Nick has picked his. I've picked mine. We are still waiting on uh, Shelby's pick here. Plus, at the end of the month, a.k.a. the beginning of February, we will be reviewing Royal Rumble 2023 here. So, uh, of course, tonight we're going to be playing It Came From eBay, Three Word Dance, which I think we had time to get some new ones there. So that's going to be pretty good here. Um, and then later on, we uh, we figured for after, you know, after segment game, we play 20 questions. So that should be fun. Um so, yeah, let's get right into it because we've got a few news topics here. Uh, this one I want to point out here because I just think it's fucking sad. Um, I want to mention here, did y'all know that it's been 20 years this week since Shelton Benjamin's WWE debut? 20 years? Really? Yeah. And oh, yeah, they, I guess it would be. Well, uh, and do you know how they celebrated that? On main event. Oh, with a match on main event. Wow. <laughs> That is sad. Because, like, at first I just saw, like, a post from Sean Benjamin. He was like, I got a reception in Nashville on main event that was outstanding. I always re remember it, which I was like, it's kind of a weird post. But, all right, whatever, I didn't think anything about it. You know, I was like, all right, whatever. You know, maybe that's just him. Like, thank God I'm on TV, you know. Uh, but then I found out it was his 20-year anniversary. I was like, and that's how they decided to celebrate it. Randy Orton gets, like, a whole month. Yeah. John Cena gets, like, a whole year. Shelton Benjamin gets, like... <laughs> One match, match on a show a that nobody match watches. On main event. I mean, what if they at least gave it to him on Raw? Like, hey, it's Shelton Benjamin's 20th year, and he gets like a little squash match on Raw. That'd been like one thing, but main event. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, he was released once and then brought back and then released and brought back. So, I mean, tactically speaking. I know, but still, it's just so sad. Like, well, that's how we celebrate. It is, yeah. But there ain't no stopping him now, like he said in that <laughs> promo. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he doesn't nowhere, have the music anymore. Yeah, he's nowhere close to making a million bucks. Hey, speaking of a million bucks, uh, uh, <laughs> about two weeks ago or three weeks ago now, Mandy Rose was released from uh, WWE for, uh, you know, posting illicit pictures and a little bit of a uh, nudity on fan time, which I'm pretty sure Mandy Rose is like, the only reason now that that website is known because I never heard of it mm -hmm. until Mandy Rose was like fired for it. Yeah. You know? um, but Mandy Rose, at first, it was first reported that a couple days after her release, she made over a half a million dollars from the website. Now, since it's been almost a month now, I think uh, she is officially a millionaire. It's funny, yeah. too, because. I don't remember where I heard this, but like shortly after she was let go and they were talking about how she made a quarter of a mil, they were like, she's going to be a millionaire by the end of the year. And sure enough, it happened. I don't and know if it's by the end of the year. But... Anything. Like, it's like, here's <laughs> me in my swimsuit. Here's yeah. somebody in I the can... shower and you can't see anything. Like, what the fuck? Like, there's somebody on Instagram that like I don't follow. 
but like I follow them on OnlyFans and like it's the same shit. I'm just like I mean, luckily it's free on OnlyFans, like their OnlyFans is free, but I'm just like, why? Like, why is it the same shit? Yeah. You know? Whereas Mandy Rose, I mean, gotta get handed to her. She's just like, you know what? I can post the same shit on Instagram, but then make these fucking perverts pay for it and pay thirty bucks. <laughs> You're yeah. saying those perverts are like, oh yeah, fucking idiots, making really? more money than she would have made in the wrestling business. But here's it's the thing, called triple w dot pornhub dot com. But here's the thing though, if if they're just like, wow. hey, you know, we fucked up, our bad. Would you like to come back to WWE? Does she say no. yes? No, God no. <laughs> okay, let me Why keep the fancy she? account. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe she likes wrestling that much, though. Oh, I doubt oh it. shit, she does. <laughs> if she was willing to just say fuck it anyway, and it's like I don't even have to get naked for these perverts that are going to pay for that, it anyway. That is like, true. Oh. It'd be one thing if she had to go on there and like spread the lips open and shit, and people were like, "Here's the money," but no, she's just like bikini, and they're just like fucking a. How long does it last, though? That is a that's good question. the question, right? That's the question. Yeah. 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 As long as she keeps that body trim, I guess. But, like, if she's not posting anything new, like, I mean, you know, you can only, I would I would think you could only post so many bikini photos that people will pay for and or videos for so long there before are people some, are going to get bored of it. There are some perverts out there that don't really give a shit. That is yeah, keep paying, thinking, okay, I'll get more and more if I keep paying. They They just have that yeah. narrow mind where it doesn't commute I, that they can just go to another website for free and see all I mean, of there, it and then there's like some like adult stars and shit like that where i can just be like well i fuck i'm tired of seeing them naked but there are some that i'm just yep. like i never get tired of seeing them naked yeah <laughs> so there's probably oh, yeah. people out there that are just like i don't care she just wears bikinis here's another 30 bucks i guess i don't know i, I don't see it as like a a long-term business plan, but hey, she made a million dollars, so <laughs> she made a million bucks. I mean, maybe, maybe when the well dries out is maybe when she's like, hey, 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 uh, what's his name? Hey, Matt, can I maybe come back? <laughs> Actually, then it might be hey, Vince. No. Oh, <laughs> Speaking of no. Vince, there we go. I was gonna save that one for later, but all right, you gave me the segue for it. Speaking of Vince, turns out Vince McMahon talking about another comeback. WWE, which again, I, I I guess I gotta do some research on how like that level of business works, like CEO type business. Cause I, I thought like once you step down, you can't just be like, Well, I want to be CEO. That's like if I were to walk into a Burger King and I'm just like, I'm gonna be the manager now. Well, see, here's the thing, and it's like it's not only does he own half the company, but he owns more shares than any than the rest of the yeah. shareholders combined. So oh, he okay. has like eighty so... percent of the shares or something like that, and the others are like twenty total. So he he still calls all the shots. But if the thing wants. is, is that the board too can still reject this proposal. Oh, and but he's board. on the board. It and doesn't he, matter that like, he's on the board because there's only he's seeking to he's he's not technically on the board. The board of directors that make decisions, he's not technically part of that board because he stepped down. No, no. no. There's still a board of directors outside the stockholders Mm -hmm. that can make a decision like for the well-being of the company. So he has to convince the stockholders, or not the stockholders, but the board, that himself, George Berrios, and Michelle Wilson should replace three current members of the board, of which those three don't hold positions on the board right now. All right, so here Vince goes in and says, okay, if you don't let me do this, I'm just going to pull all my money out and you're going to lose 80% of your fucking funds. Well, but Triple H... That's pretty much Triple how it works. Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and fucking Nick Khan can still fucking pay for that, though. Can they? Do they have that much money? I I would think think so so by this point. I don't know. Nick Khan, I would I am almost positive he does. I I just don't like I mean the whole thing with Vince being like, oh, I'm gonna come back just to sell the company. Yeah, I can see him doing that out of spite, but will the board who has the control, regardless of the fucking shareholders, the board of directors has the control. So if they're like, yeah, no, we're not accepting this. We're in a good direction right now. The 
at, or the sponsorship partners and everything, they do want to stay on board or whatever it is, the broadcast partners, they can still say, fuck you. You step down. You don't so, to just be like, I'm coming back now. And I, I don't know an how, sorry. I don't know how, uh, how reputable this, this website is, but according to this fucking, what is it? Flimsyapa website. Oh, that sounds legit. <laughs> it does sound legit, eh? That <laughs> it says like Nick the website Con's... that gave me a virus in 2008. <laughs> it says Nick Khan's net worth is $5 million. Which, if it's true, isn't Vince worth, like, billions? No, he's not a billionaire no. anymore. Ever since the, um... It was like a, a money crash a couple of fucking, like, ten years mm. ago or something. That yeah. he went, like, way under a billion. Okay. Yeah. I am seeing more saying the company that itself worth is worth Nikon. much more than what any executive is. But personally, that on that level, they're not worth near as much as what WWE is company is. Yeah. If, my idea is that I think if they were to let Vince come into like power or whatever, however it works. I think the ace of Vince's sleeve is, is that he, ha- he probably is going to open up like, you know, Vince holding or whatever or something. And he's going to sell it to himself. Yeah. Oh my God. That'd be fucking incredible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I think. I, I think that's the ace of his sleeve. I don't think he's going to be like, Oh, let me sell it to Disney and make money and shit like that. I, I think he's going to sell it to himself just so he could get back in control. Yeah. See, either he's going to sell it to himself or he's going to sell it to somebody else and then start his own company. But yeah. after you said that, I am starting to think sell he probably to will try Khan. and sell it to himself. He ain't going to sell it to Tony Khan. Tony Khan couldn't I, afford it anyway. But A-E-W-W-E. See, A-E-W-W-E. The, the Khan family. That no. Khan family could it, afford it. No. And no. I can't help but, but But think about this, though. If, if Vince puts it up for sale mm-hmm. and so he puts it up for sale, whatever, and he has already, like, apparently there's a clause where no kind of rights deals or anything be, can be negotiated without his say. So he's basically saying, fuck Nick Khan, fuck my daughter, and fuck Triple H. I don't give a shit about your roles in the company. I still own it. So I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to, sell it right out from under you, and you'll all be unemployed. I mean, that would be a Vince move. And, but it and then he'd hire him back, so that's the thing. bigger Vince move if he sold it to Tony Khan under the pretense that he could run that portion of things and Tony could just run the books or whatever, and now suddenly Vince is booking fucking WWE, AEW, and ROH all under one banner, and he's like, fuck the rest of you. You're all out of fucking jobs. Like, have fun trying to find them. He ain't selling to the cons. The cons aren't even going to buy it. Nah. I don't know. I think if he sells to anybody, it's... what if they did? WWE on ice, man. That's where we're (laughs) at. Holy fuck. (laughs) A whole new slam. A brand new pounding you can take. Okay. (laughs) Fuck. All of a sudden, Elsa's going to be hanging out with fucking Alexa Bliss. That's, WWE that's Disney, Network right? on Disney Plus. <laughs> WWE Network on Disney Plus. Uh, they would just have to like censor like th- there would be no attitude error. Would just skip from like ninety five to two thousand two. Survivor <laughs> Series is brought to you by the brand new Disney Pixar fucking classic. Whatever insert name here. <laughs> uh, we have uh, don't wake the toys up, Matt. Hey, speaking of crazy matches, yeah, I was going somewhere else today, but you gave me another segue for it. Hey, speaking of crazy matches, at Royal Rumble coming up at the end of the month here, uh, there is going to be a new WWE-style matchup. It is going to be Bray Wyatt finally wrestling a fucking match like 17 months after his re-debut. Uh, take it on L.A. Knight in a first-ever Pitch Black night or i'm sorry yeah pitch black match sorry pitch. okay so this mountain dew pitch black match yes. that i'm reading right now it's called a mountain dew pitch black match it's well i don't know if it's if it has the mountain dew name that'd be new to me but i know it's a pitch black match 
And that's that's the gimmick there is that because Pitch Black Mountain Dew is going to be re-released in January, also available in a zero sugar variant. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be it's kind of it's going to be kind of like the uh, what was it the Army of the Dead match they did. Uh, minus, uh, hope, hopefully minus the zombies though. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be minus zombies. Come but... on, it's Bray Wyatt. How Who do you... knows what kind of fucking things are going to come out for with this shit? How do you do a pitch black match? The whole point of wrestling is seeing the action. It's cinematic. But it's if pitch black. So like, how are you going to? Maybe see... they just maybe they just sat well... out and do pitch black and fucking hoses and they spray each other with them. <laughs> you just see like green fluorescent green like no, no, no. okay that's the okay this is the match okay get ready for it all right i'm gonna i'm gonna throw you back a little bit i'm gonna throw you back to great american bash 2006 here okay there's it's bray wyatt la Knight, and there's like a fucking container like up the aisle the first one to throw their opponent in the container and fill it with mountain dew pitch black wins they drown their opponent in pitch black. <laughs> and, that's the, and that's the marketing scheme. Mountain Dew pitch black so good, you have to drown yourself in it. That's. Oh, no. <laughs> and somewhere Vince McMahon is like, ha, 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 ha. And you think I didn't have control, pal? <laughs> Holy fuck. You know, they bring back the concrete crit match. That'd be a hell of a return. Speaking of return, uh, Friday, we had a uh, shocking return. In my opinion, it was a shocking return because I didn't see it coming. If you would have told me, like, hey, this might happen on Friday, I didn't see it fucking coming. But uh, Raquel Raquel Rodriguez, I, I always want to say Gonzalez, but they I keep remembering they changed her name to Rodriguez because she just wasn't Hispanic enough, I guess. Um, yeah. But Raquel Rodriguez lost a SmackDown Women's Championship match to... Ronda Rousey, so I'm just like, all right, I guess I killed that character, um, in my opinion. But after the match, Charlotte Flair makes a surprise return, rocking new gear, which I got to admit, like the new gear. Don't like the new music, um, but did like the new gear and challenges Ronda Rousey to a SmackDown women's title match, which we thought was going to happen at Royal Rumble, but nay, it happened right there, and just like that, Charlotte Flair is now a... 14 time women's champion? I think what that's correct. What do we think? I think something for it, like for it. You know, I was kind of on the fence about it until I saw what happened at Russell Kingdom with fucking looking like a butterfly flew up on her, threw up on her fucking head. Uh, you know what? I'm glad Charlotte's back. Um, because like, I mean, I, I never really cared for Charlotte before, but I'm like, you know what? This feels kind of somewhat fresh. So as long as I'll, they, I'll take it. As long as they would have got that. I don't care if fucking like the referee, Jessica Carr would have took the title off of Ronda Rousey. As long as it's off of her now. Well, she doesn't get to see Ronda doesn't give a fuck about WWE wrestling, any of that. She's nowhere near as popular as what she was before she be before she got her ass kicked by Holly Hom in UFC. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't understand why she keeps trying to do this. Like I mean, the fans just generally don't fucking like you, so fuck you. Well, I step think, aside you know, and let people that actually want to do this, I, let them do it. You know, there's there's been people who like they start off shit. And then they get better as they go. Like a perfect. I know y'all are gonna disagree with me on this. But like somebody like Eva Marie. Eva Marie came in just like the holy fuck. Drizzly <laughs> fucking shit. But listen, listen. She put in the work, and to me, she made some. I'm not saying she's fucking great, but she put in the work and made improvements. But rarely do you ever see somebody come in. And you're like, wow, their debut match for first time ever wrestling. That was great. I.e. Ronda Rousey. Like, wow, she did really well and everything. And then you just see their fucking quality just go down the steepest fucking slope you've ever seen. Because they're shit human beings. You can be a shit human being and do any fucking job. It doesn't, just because you might be okay at the job doesn't mean you're not a shit human being. 
<clears throat> um, yeah, sir, Shelby. <laughs> Glad to see Charlotte back. I think they should have built this in to be a bit bigger of a match. Charlotte and Ronda is a pretty big match, in my opinion. I like yeah, Ronda. But, but we've seen him before, so why build towards it again? Uh, we haven't seen him with Ronda as a heel. That's true. Right? And I think that Ronda's done better as a heel than she was doing as a babyface. At least I believe her now when she fucking comes to the ring scowling and fucking yelling at the fans and shit. It's more believable than when she was like trying to smile her way to the fucking ring. Um, I like that, this version of um, of Ronda much better than the previous one. And I think that they kind of wasted the whole Ronda title reign just by dropping it to Charlotte on her return night when they could have done it at the Rumble or WrestleMania. So WrestleMania, I think, would have been a better idea, but, um, you know, excited. Hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe now Ronda has time to go into a larvae and then into a cocoon and then emerge from that cocoon as a butterfly. Hey, speaking of butterflies, (laughs) (laughs) it was a long way to get there, but I got was it ever. (laughs) Holy fuck. Uh, speaking of butterflies, uh, Wrestle Kingdom 17 Fuck. was this past weekend, and we finally saw what has become of the now former Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks no more. It is now the CEO, Mercedes Monet. First of all, it looks like a butterfly threw up on her fucking head. I like Second that. of all, she came out to fucking crickets. I didn't hear there was, the song. There was no fucking pop. Nothing. I mean, it's no. Japan. There, there generally it isn't much of a pop. Okay, there generally isn't much of a pop, but it's fucking crickets. And then she botched her new finishing move. On the I was wondering what the fuck that had. was. I saw I him, like, do the handshake with Kyrie. Which FYI, she you know came out at the end of Kyrie Sane's match, and then like she pulled her in with the gory and then flipped her, and I'm like, what the fuck was that? <sighs> fuck. I'll admit oh. that like I haven't been I haven't been paying much attention this, this to is New Japan. Fucking joke. Once I saw her hair and the fucking travesty that that fucking was. I like the hair. I don't it looks like a butterfly threw up. We her got it. Took a shit. Like I mean, fuck. I'll admit, I haven't been paying much attention to New Japan, and I haven't watched Wrestle Kingdom. I was going to, but now I heard all the results, so I don't know if I'm going to bother. But I thought she was supposed to be facing Kyrie for the IWGP Women's no, Championship. No, that's at the next New Japan event. What is it, Battle in the Valley or some shit? Yeah, in the yeah. U.S. So you go to New Japan, and you're going to wrestle your first fucking New Japan match in the fucking U.S. Fuck off. It kind of makes sense, actually. No, it doesn't. She's because an American she's star. She's already wrestled Kari Zayn before. She has wrestled Kari Zayn before on American wrestling program. And then suddenly she's going to go to Japan and be like, oh, yeah, I'm the CEO. I'm going to botch my finishing move and have this stupid fucking hair and all this shit. I'm coming for your title, but we're going to wrestle for it in the fucking U.S. Fuck you. This Listen, bitch Nick. should just fucking retire and fuck Who, who hurt you? <laughs> I really want to know. Like, who hurt you? <laughs> Sorry. I know that's why I'm like he's really offended by this. <laughs> yeah. I think like putting her first match in the states makes the most sense because that's where she's gonna get the biggest pop. No, it doesn't. and she'll be a huge draw in the Fuck. states. I don't really care for her, but, but I don't know because like remember like early 2000s WWE women's wrestling, you'd, you'd see like I don't know two diva whores or whatever they the come out and say. Save- they they wrestled for like five minutes and that's it. Well, the IWGP Women's Championship match was about five and a half minutes. Oh wow! Yeah, actually, yeah, it was the shortest match on the show. So yeah. that's the thing, though. Like that's still really new for Japan and IW and IWGP, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Like they really or haven't whatever. had yeah, women's Japan. wrestling. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, yeah, they haven't had women's wrestling really uh, up until like I don't know the last year or two, and they. Up until this point, they were just kind of using like other. I don't remember. I don't remember the names of um, the women's promotions in Japan, but they. I think they stardom. used them. Yeah, Stardom, and I think there's another one too. Um, oh, Joshi Pro or whatever the fuck. Um, I think they were just using them 
That'd be great. I I love to watch their shit. And the winner and new Joshi Pro, whatever the fuck champion. (laughs) So I don't know. I I I I'm not excited to see Sasha Banks, but I am interested to see where she goes from here. I hear the name Monet. Whatever. She's Monet. I Whatever. hear the name Monet, and I immediately think how much of a failure Ty of Valkyrie was in WWE. Because Vince is a fucking shit hustling fuck nut. But in Japan, she doesn't have the T on her name. It's M O N. Oh, fuck. I in America, a though, she fuck. has the T. You're so I'm offended kidding. by this. That's what I'm like, what did she that. do to you? <laughs> she was gone for long enough. Like, first it was, I can't miss you if you won't go away. Then she went away. Then and if she's gone for long back. enough, I don't give a fuck. She wasn't as good as what people are hyping her up to be. I, I, so fuck this bitch. I, I disagree, disagree with that. I disagree, but I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to get into it with you. Butterfly throwing <laughs> up on her fucking head. What a stupid fucking hairstyle. I really fuck. need to see this outfit. That hair is fire. I don't care what you say on that one. That one I if she had like. kept it orange and that outfit, she would have looked like the chick from the fifth element. And maybe, just maybe, I would have thought, you know what? Maybe this could work. But, but fuck that. Oh, that but is weird hair. Up on your oh, fuck you both. Head. I think the hair is fire. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not shitting on a like that. Him. Why would you pay for that? You're not going to last any. You stupid fuck. <laughs> you okay? You want us to stop? You need some water or something? No, no. We're no? You good, I just huh? think it's fucking dumb. It does look fucking weird, that's for sure. What the hell Sasha did to Nick? Jesus Christ. I know, right? Did you, pay, did you pay 90 bucks for a photo and she stood like 10 feet away or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nor would I. I just don't. I don't give like, a shit. I think, I'm tired I'm of hearing sure, like, about this bitch. I'm tired of hearing about the fucking money people want to pay for this shit. I'm tired of hearing about all her fucking Well, because I'm pretty preferences. sure. I'm pretty sure when we mentioned like, oh, Sasha might be coming back to WWE, you're like, yeah, okay, I'm for it and everything. Now all of a sudden she's in Japan and you're like, fuck this stupid horny ass. Well, whatever. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> Your opinion changed on her really quick here. It did. I would expect this out of Shelby, but not you. Moving on. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess Mercedes and Kyrie is their dream match. Hey, speaking of dream match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that was weak. Yeah. Well, I mean, fuck. I mean, like Nick's is so funny. What's come from like, here? Um, but speaking of dream match, uh, WrestleMania 39 might, might uh, uh, rumor innuendo. Might have a particular dream match on it. Uh, a certain WWE wrestler who is contracted by WWE. So, I mean, a certain WWE wrestler has pitched a certain match to happen at WrestleMania 39 here. So, we could see at, Lo- uh, at WrestleMania Logan Paul taking on one John Cena. I'm down. <clears throat> I heard there's three potentials for Cena matches. And I heard the other two were either Austin Theory or Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is not going to happen. I don't get no. why everybody is so fucking getting their panties in a bunch that they want to see Theory versus Cena. I don't get it. Theory's see, the shit. I, you know. I would love to see Theory and Cena if they're going to do it right. I don't give a shit about Cena anyway. If you're going to bring Cena in, Logan Paul is the perfect opponent for Cena. I don't know. I don't. He was 30 seconds on SmackDown. That was it. 30 fucking seconds that he was in the ring. You can't tell me that he deserves to be in the ring with a full-time wrestling competitor or a wrestler that people are going to pop over, like a part-timer or whatever. You can't tell me that that's going to be the best thing for the fucking business itself. You put him against Logan Paul, you let them run some promos, you let Logan Paul beat him, hell yeah. I don't know. I still think Austin Theory beating Cena would give him a good rub. Plus, they had that interaction looks like in the summer. Diesel. I wipe my ass with things that look better than fucking Theory. Fuck. God damn, man. Austin oh, Theory is the best. Um, how about Logan Paul and a partner versus John Cena and his bald spot? How about that one? 
Um, maybe, maybe. <clears throat> and no clever segue for this one right here because we got some sad news here. Uh, Don West, uh, as we've mentioned before, had a episode with brain cancer. I think like at the start of this, when we started doing this podcast, is when he was first diagnosed with brain cancer. And uh, he went into treatment and actually beat it. We're like, fuck yeah, Don West beat brain cancer. Probably just yelled at it for a fucking hour and beat it. <laughs> That's how I'll sell you 15 is. DVDs at $15. <laughs> brain cancer was like, fuck this. I'm, out of here. I'm so done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the cancer came back and he went back into treatment. And unfortunately, this time, cancer was able to beat Don West. And Don West is no longer with us because he has passed away. Um, now, this is something I found out about Don West when I found that he died. But apparently, you know, he, as we all know, he has, you know, he has that passion for selling, uh, uh, you know, items and such like that. But apparently, like he, he was so passionate about selling that in 2000, WCW actually offered him a job. Really? Wow. And now, yeah, I never found that. I never knew that. But he, he, it was one of those things where he was like, I, I, I don't, I don't know anything about wrestling. <laughs> so like, why? Well, I why? think that's what he said when they approached him for TNA. Yeah, too. and that's pretty like, much what it I is. But I guess he was just like, all right, I guess I'll give it a try, you know. But like when they approached him in WCW, it was just like, I, I don't know anything about it, you know. Yeah. Like, why do it if I don't know anything about it, you know? Whereas Adnan Burke, I guess, was just like, okay, yeah. Um, Money. The, yeah. But uh, yeah, and then he finally did it in TNA and just adapted to it so well. And like I said, he wasn't the best. I'm not gonna no, sit here. I'm not gonna sit here. Best, but... Yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and suck his dick all night long. But like, <laughs> he, you know, like I said, he always tried so hard. You know, my favorite fucking thing was when he'd overexplain shit. You know, he extended his hand with a rolled hand and hit him in the face. What was that, Mike? That was a punch, Don. <laughs> you know, Some of the um. That. The earliest memories I have watching wrestling is Don West announcing yeah. from TNA. Yeah. And Asha, I just found this out too. Uh, he also pitched products of uh, Beanie Babies and Pokemon collectibles, which is kind of oh, interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. he worked for the shopping channel. Yeah, he worked for the home shopping channel. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, that's why he left TNA because, like, some hockey team was just like, we want you to sell our shit. And he's like, all right, yeah. <laughs> But hey, money's money, you know. But yeah, Don West, never going to be another one like him. Right there. No, not at all. Oh, yeah. You can't have the 13 man commentary team. I know. Don West. <laughs> hey, we don't even need the 13 man. If you would have just gave me Mauro Ronaldo, Don West, and fucking if he was still alive, just although I hated his commentary style, but just because he screamed everything, if you would have just gave me Don West, Mauro Ronaldo, and Roddy Piper, I think that'd be <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Roddy Piper was different in like mid Atlantic. He was actually like insightful. I don't know what the hell happened when he started doing commentary in the WWF. God, he was terrible in <laughs> WWF. Oh my god, I hated every second of him in the booth. But that's like the way that they commentate. Like you hear it now, even with like Cole and fucking uh, uh, Barrett and Booker. I don't know. Maybe it was just his voice. Corey. Was like sucky ducky. It's one thing when you hear that high point, uh, that high pitch yell when it's from Piper and shit when it's in a promo. Yeah, it means something. but when you're hearing it for like fucking 15 minutes on a match, it's just like fucking shut up. A two hour program and it's yeah, on exactly. every match. You know, yeah, that, I think maybe that was my problem with Piper in the booth. I don't know, but like, probably. Yeah, but or just Don West and Marvin Allen. Give me those two, man. Those two <laughs> <probably> <laughs> kill. You know, <laughs> like, if I'm ever drafting like a dream commentary team, it's gonna be Marvin Allen and Don West. So that's gonna be the ones right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that was the news this week. Now we're going to move on to our games we like to play here. It came from eBay in the three-word dance, and we always like to start with it came from eBay. Where is my scorecard? Okay. Um, it came from eBay where I give these guys three unique wrestling items that I found on eBay and see if they can figure out which one is the most expensive of the three. And I found some, uh, I found some good shit here. So... Let's go with, uh, let's start with these three right here. These are five. You guys remember Surge Soda? No. No. Really? Y'all didn't have that in Canada? I don't think so. We're not. Okay. I don't think. Surge was like the, uh, the, the uh, essentially the original energy drink, so to speak. I mean, it was a Coke product. People went fucking bonkers for this shit in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s and shit. And then like it disappeared. 
then it came back and i think now you can only get it like certain burger kings and you can buy it online um but uh, apparently wcw had a, a little bit of a partnership with surge uh, so this is five empty cans of surge from 1999 with pictures of wcw wrestlers on them they feature uh sting Kevin Nash, Goldberg, Booker T, and an unmasked Rey Mysterio. Oh, wow. Five cans with a picture each with the Monday Night Nitro logo on there. Or, get ready for this one. I thought this one was really cool. This is an Impact Wrestling Georgia lottery ticket. Huh? One of the scratch-off lottery tickets. This It's an unscratched lottery ticket. It features Jeff Hardy on the side there. Or... Here's another unique one. I thought this was really cool, too. Um, this is a triple-A, you know, the Mexican, you know, not mm-hmm. triple-A as in the auto service, but triple-A as in Mexican wrestling. Conan Lunchbox. This features Conan on the on the Lunchbox here. And is, this is like early Conan, too, when he said, like, the singlet and shit. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, early 90s Conan. Plus, it also has the thermos, which also has him in the – singlet and shit. it's a bright yellow lunchbox that features conan on it from triple a so which one of these three are going for the most expensive price on ebay the conan lunch kit yeah i'm going with the lunch kit as well i knew y'all were going to do that no points damn believe it or not the most expensive item here is the five empty surge cans from 1999 See, that's for- what i was gonna say fuck you going for the price i didn't do it Going for the price of $125. Damn. Yeah. All right, let's see here. I found some other good stuff here. Uh, okay, let's go with these right here. All right, your first three. Okay, yeah, this is a good one. This is another weird one I found. 1989 WWF sealed postcards. This was a package of postcards that you could actually use and send off to your friends or whoever. There were six different... Oh, no, not six different. This was just a pack of postcards that featured the Ultimate Warrior, the Rockers, Jake the Snake Roberts, Hulk Hogan, Rick Rude, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Macho Man Randy Savage, Dusty Rhodes, and the Bushwhackers. No Hulk Hogan. I said Hulk Hogan. Oh, oh I missed it. Sorry. <laughs> um, or... Is it two WWF WrestleFest drinking glasses? If you guys remember the classic arcade game, WWF WrestleFest, this has the characters from the game uh, in the WrestleFest, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Cartoonish style, I guess would be two drinking glasses. Blah, blah, blah. This one I was actually shocked I stumbled across here. This is a WWF New York lunchbox. No thermos or anything like that. Didn't come with one. I did some research on it. No thermos ever came with it. It was just a black lunchbox. WWF New York uh, logo slapped onto the lunchbox. Which one of these three are going for the most expensive price on eBay? The WWF New York lunchbox. I'll go with the drinking glasses. No points. Damn. Damn. It is, it is actually the 1989 sealed postcards going for the price of $120. Oh, let me check that off. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Dude, you guys are sucking ass to me. Yeah, we are. Um, okay. Here's three unique ones here. The, the, see, I, I told you, I found some doozies here. Yeah, you did. First one is a WWE. You guys remember WWE Anthology? Yeah. yeah. WWE Anthology Sampler CD. As we all know, WWE Anthology was released as a three CD set from the past, uh, or like the early past, past, and then future or present, whatever the fuck. Uh, but this was a six CD track that pretty much said, hey, these are the songs that are on here, and you can go pick you up a copy of the full CD elsewhere and such like that. And the six songs that featured on here were Hulk Hogan's Real American, Shawn Michaels' Sexy Boy, D-Generation X, uh, The Rock's original theme, Trish Stratus's theme, and The Undertaker. Hmm. Or, this is another fun one, is it a Drowning Pool WWF Bodies Remix CD? This was a WWE-released re- Drowning Pool CD, which just featured remixes of uh, the song Bodies, which, as we all know, WWF loved to use that song for quite a long time. Let the bodies hit the... 
Okay. <laughs> or get ready for this one. This I thought at first I thought this was one thing, but then it turned out to be another one. Uh, but I saw this and I was like, holy shit. Or is it the Terry Funk <laughs> tougher than shoe leather vinyl LP? Now when I saw what? that, I was like, I was like, this motherfucker sang. I was just like, I wouldn't put it past him. Everybody sang in the seventies, but it's actually a spoken word album. So it's about like his life and shit like that. No. Yeah. That's so still pretty, yeah, still pretty cool though. But at I'm first I was like, who the fucker sang? I would yeah. love to hear Terry Funk sing. You know? <laughs> uh, so Terry Funk, Tougher than Shoe Leather, Vinyl LP. Which one of these three are going for the most expensive price on eBay? The Terry, the, the Terry Funk's Tougher than Shoe Leather LP. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Tougher than Shoe Leather as well. No points. Damn. That just seems so unique. It <laughs> is. It is really unique. It is actually the WWE Anthology Sampler CD going for the price of $74.09. Can't you get the regular CD for less than 50 bucks? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the sampler. This, you know, yeah, you know, has like much, a yeah. fucking like 16th of the songs on it. I know, right? Yeah. Um, hold on just a second here. I'm going to give y'all one more shot just so y'all don't go pointless this week. And if y'all go pointless in this one, you're at it. That's it. Um, That's it. We're done with the show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, let's go with... Where'd they go? Okay. Is it the 1999 Stone Cold Steve Austin talking doorbell? Is uh, apparently some nice. kind of doorbell. Yeah, is it, it's, it didn't say what kind of doorbell. It didn't say if it was, like, for a bedroom or, like, for your house. I'm assuming it's, like, for a bedroom. Right. You know? I think <laughs> you put it outside your house and be like, hey, it's your door, motherfucker. You know? Um, although that would be cool, too. <laughs> what if it was, like, the recording of him at Bellman's house? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, the, and the doorbell, by the way, is still sealed in the package. Or... Is it the 1985 Andre the Giant? Andre is awesome bookmark. It's just a picture of Andre the Giant. It says Andre is awesome. And it's a bookmark. Nice. Or here's another unique one I, I thought was cool. Is it the four WWF New York sugar packets? These are just four sugar packets from the WWF New York restaurant. It's just black long tubes that say WWF New York. And apparently there's sugar inside. Which one of these three are going for the most expensive price on eBay? The WWF New York Sugar Packets. Hmm. I'm going to go with the doorbell. God damn, you both suck. No problem. Really? <laughs> it's actually the 1985 Andre is awesome bookmark going for the price of $50. All right, ring the bell. Yeah, I know, right? Shit. <laughs> Fuck that shit after that. God damn. All right, now we'll move on to the three-word dance. Hopefully, we'll do better here. Probably not, though. Um, uh, where we give each other three words that relate to a wrestler, possibly. Because <laughs> sometimes it's words that don't even relate to them, but we got to think hard. And see if we can make the connection here. Um, so, the first one here I'm going to give you guys is Team Entrance Nasty. Sean Spears. Damn it! No. (laughs) 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 Oh, fuck. Weren't you saying earlier you thought these would be really hard? I thought I was really clever with that one. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. I guess don't use that really good one you were telling me about earlier. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You might have to explain this one a little bit to me, though. Explain which one. Team entrance and nasty being Sean Spears. Look at the letters. Ten. Oh, ten. <laughs> that is fucking good. <laughs> All right. 
my first three words cotton mouth copperhead mississauga what bobby ruth no what was that last word mississauga santino morella no you're thinking of mississauga the place the that's not the missus no I don't even know how to spell that. <laughs> what are the first two words? Uh, Cottonmouth and Copperhead. I don't Fastest. Even want to play. I don't even want to play anymore. <laughs> What'd you say, Nick? Fastest. No. And mm. your hint being snake. Jay Roberts. No. Very close though. Or a very good guess, I should say. The Undertaker. No. Lance Archer. No. Grizzly Smith. No. Stan Hansen. No. Sam Houston. No. Rock and Robin. No. Really? Scott Hall. No. Owen Hart? No. DDP. No. <laughs> I don't want to play anymore. I got nothing. Yeah. Got, got nothing? nothing? No. All right. Cottonmouth, Copperhead, and Mississauga all being snakes for the rattlesnake, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Because they're for all Texas sake. snakes. Yeah, Michelle, you suck. <laughs> Okay, the next three words. Uh, big. Sorry, say it again. Big. Big. Rig. Dog. Mm. Road dog. No. Yeah. Big rig dog. Junkyard dog? Nope. Oh, is it fuck this game? <laughs> is that who it is? No. Um Braun Breaker? Nope. Scott Steiner. No. No, Rick not Steiner. Rick Steiner as well. No. Is it, um, fuck, what's his name? Dave Sullivan. No. Big rig fucking, uh, dog. <laughs> fucking, large, uh. <laughs> large truck canine. Nope. It has nothing to do with synonyms. You know, I want to believe you, but I don't. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Can't believe anything in this world anymore. Uh, Hint. Do you know who I am? Batista? No. Nope. Edge? No. Nope. That's you think you know me. Yeah, I figured it was going for the opposite. Uh, Chris Jericho. Bitch, I know what it is. No. Nope. Oh, that's don't you think you were me. Or don't you wish you were me. Or remind me of that shit. 
<laughs> but you wish you were there. Oh God, no. Dolph Ziggler. Nope. I'm out. Cash Wheeler. Nope. Dax Harwood. No. FTR. Nope. I'm out. Big rig dog. Bubba Ray. Oh, my God. Do you know who I am from TNA? Oh, shit. How does big rig dog? What? Bubba Ray. Bubba Ray. Ray B-R-D. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck it out. I knew it was that, too, but I couldn't figure out what the fucking letters represented. <clears throat> Fuck. All right. Like it matters. Um. Go with. All right. It sounds so defeated. <laughs> I'm so mad. I cannot believe that. <laughs> Do some throwaways. I know, yeah. Wolfgang, Owen, Oni. Ric Flair. I'm fucking done with this game. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one. Holy shit. (laughs) Nick's gotten good at those. (laughs) Um, My next three. Foghorn. Corn Flakes, Nando's. What? <laughs> what was that last one? Why do you keep making up fucking words? Nando's. Spell it. N A N D O S C O. Fuck sakes. Cornflakes, Nando's, Sasha Banks. Nope. Mercedes Monet. No. Um, <sighs> what was the first two words? Foghorn and cornflakes. <laughs> cornflakes Nando- is two words. Was no cornflakes is one word. No, it ain't. F C O. Where are you getting F C O? Oh shit! It is too. Oh, that cornflakes is one word. Whatever, it's the four-word dance now. <laughs> Wait a minute, where are you getting FCO? It'd be FCN. Nando's. Nando's, oh, okay. Yeah, FCN. Okay, what Is it, ta- it Tugboat? No. What the fuck does Nando's... One Man Gang? No. I don't know. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I spent my day off coming up with these. <laughs> Nick just gets them like nothing. Nando's. Fuck, I have no hint. NXT trainer. Matt, Matt Bloom? No. Nigel McGinnis? No. Dean Malenko? No, no, wait. Steve Carino? No. Body to body? No, no. Fuck sakes. I don't know. Uh, William Regal? No. Um, I don't fucking know. I got him fucking nothing. <laughs> All right, you both give up? Yeah. Foghorn Leghorn is a rooster. Cornflakes has a rooster for a logo, and Nando's is a chicken company. They Terry like Taylor, lesson. you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Terry Taylor is correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, is it my turn now? Yeah. I've never been more fucking done with this game than Okay, <laughs> so next three words. Ham, pork, beef. Meat. Okay, yeah, you got it. 
<laughs> there you go. You got one. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Hey, I haven't got one yet. <laughs> I'm just looking at these now. Like, do I really give a shit? You know what? I'm going to do the one that I was going to say for a rainy day, but fuck it. Champion, faceless, empty. CBE. No, faceless. Not baseless. Yeah. Faceless. Gold dust. I knew I should have saved this for a rainy day. Fuck, no, not gold dust. C. I should have listened to Shelby. I should have saved this to when I actually had two out of three. Joe Gacy? <laughs> no. Bray Wyatt? Nope. Axiom? Nope. CFE. Champion, faceless, empty. Dexter Loomis? No. Right, Wyatt. No. You can put these words in any order this time. Empty, faceless, champion, faceless, champion, empty. Hmm. Hint. This person's a multiple time champion in all companies. All companies. Mm-hmm. Like all current companies? Sure. Demo or er, Axe. No. Smash. No. Hmm. Rey Mysterio. No. AJ Styles. No. Samoa Joe. No. Fuck up. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dean Ambrose. No. Yeah, I've got nothing. Claudio Castagnoli. No. Chris Jericho. No. Yeah, I got nothing. This person is actually listed on the WWE website. It's vacant. Fuck off. What? <laughs> Come on. Fuck you. That's bullshit. They've been champion. They don't have a face, and empty's another word for vacant. You were talking about this the other day. This is the one that I was just telling you about where I was just like, I got a good one here that's going to make y'all want to come down here and beat my ass. <laughs> I will the fly one. out there and beat your ass. This is the you one know, that Shelby was just like, you should save this one for when you're two out of three. I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, but... Yeah, I should have now, because considering how fucking Nick just saw through the other two that I had. I think it would have been bullshit if you won that on your three out of three. <laughs> because, like, Vacant has never wrestled a match. Has he, though? No. No, he hasn't. It's He's impossible. listed on the WWE roster. Oh, okay, name the last match he had in his opponent. Who did he beat? Um, who the fuck did he beat? Oh, he beat uh, Sasha Banks and uh, Naomi. No, he didn't. Yeah, he, did he did not beat anybody. He never pinned them. They're mad. Their their shoulders never touched the mat. He has never won a match. But he, he gets was... handed. He gets handed the title every now Still. and then. But he's never wrestled a he's match. A multiple time champion. Shut up. <laughs> if he <laughs> wasn't listed bullshit. on the roster, if he wasn't listed on the roster, I I'd let you have this one. But because he's listed on the WWE roster, I'm taking this one. I'm just glad you didn't use that as your third because I would have fought that harder if you used it as your third. <laughs> I would have right. fought it tooth and nail, too. <laughs> Last three. Cross, Dove, Shepherd. Edge? No. Christian. Fuck. How'd you get Christian? I just went for oh, it. Oh, he's a I fucking mean. idiot Suvant in these games now, don't you know? Fuck. Cross, Dang. Dove, and Shepard are all symbols of Christianity. That's what I was going for. You just fucking guessed him out of fucking nowhere. 
Okay, well, last three words. Get out. Honor jeans agent. Jeans? Yeah. As in, like, blue jeans? Like, denim jeans, yeah. Okay. Agent. Jamie Noble. Oh, well, fuck. There you go. <laughs> this is a weird week of fucking uh, three word dance. Oh, you don't know how fucking furious I am, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I almost went three for three. It was for fucking Nick and his random guessing. <laughs> like, I figured y'all could probably get to Sean Spears eventually. I just didn't think you'd get there that quick. And then the Ric Flair one, I figured those those words, would be, y'all would be like, what the fuck? And then... <laughs> Nick just fucking sniping him tonight. Yeah. I, Damn you, right. You know, like, I figured the 10 one was clever because they at least sounded like other shit. So that would probably be like, oh, okay, this is not one of his bullshit ones. But then the Ric Flair one, I was just like, all right, I'll make them names of actual people. Then they'll be like, oh, okay, he's not fucking with us, you know? Fuck, fuck this game. <laughs> all right, now we're going to move on to Shelby's role playing game. And if you haven't heard our role playing game before, we have previous episodes of it. Some of them are available on Amazon, uh, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. But if you, there are some also available on youtube.com slash. The Artist V1. There is a playlist of all of our episodes that we've done, even some that are not available on Amazon, uh, Apple, and uh, Spotify there. So if you want to go back and hear the beginnings of the three-way dance wrestling podcast, you can. But before we get to the actual game and maybe, uh, you know, Nick learning some other moves other than a German suplex, uh, we've got to give a shout-out <laughs> to the great people over at th- uh, Movies Are USA. I almost said threewaydance.com. We don't have a fucking website. Um, no. Yeah. Um, Our website is YouTube. I uh, know, right? Well, we can have a website if I borrow some money from uh, Nick and Shelby. Is that okay? No. No, I borrow too much? No. <laughs> okay. I don't want a website. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you know, apparently that's all I do is borrow money from YouTube. So, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, but we got to give a shout out to MoviesRUSA.net. That is a website I don't borrow money from. That's a mo- that's a website that gets my money sometimes, though, uh, because uh, what moviesareusa.net is, you can head on over and you can find those hard to find movies and or TV shows that have either never been released on physical media before or haven't been released on physical media in quite a long time. And you can pick those up for a great price. And if that if you look at those prices and you're like, hey, that price just isn't great enough for me. Well, then, hey, you can use our checkout code. Three way, and normally this is where I would say the word, not the number. But guess what? You can use either one now. Fuck it. Go ahead. Put a put a number in front of it. Put Hell yeah. Way. And you'll put that save number there. Exactly, and you will save not ten, not twenty, not thirty, not forty, but fifty percent on your purchase. And they have such great titles to choose from. I mean, just released was a, a very hard to find movie. I doubt you two have heard of it. If you have, it, well, I don't know. It sounds like a movie that Shelby be into, but they just released. I mean, if you go on Amazon right now, this movie goes for like 80, 90 bucks. But if you go over to moviesrusa.net and use our checkout code, you can get it for like 17 bucks. And that is Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Oh, yeah, I have heard of that. Yeah, see, I figured that'd be up your alley. Or you can get, you know, the Netflix sensation. You can get Wednesday, if you haven't seen that one yet. You can get the last year's. Or you could get earlier this year's Netflix sensation, such as Dahmer, or last year's Netflix sensation, Squid Game. Plenty to choose from. You can get them all on Blu-ray. You can get DVD by special request for the movies only, not for the TV shows, unfortunately. Um, And on top of that, if you spend $50, you're going to get free shipping. That's that Man, everybody loves free shipping. Yeah, hell yeah. And. If you don't spend over $50, if you're like, hey, you know, it's after Christmas. I don't spend all my money and shit. Well, hey, if you spend under $50, only five bucks shipping. Can't beat that either, man. Five dollars shipping. Plus, he ships fast, too, man. Sometimes I'll just hit the order button and shit shows up at the door, man. That's how quick it is. It's like gets there by Pelican or something. Exactly. Shit. Uh, But don't worry, international listeners. We look at the analytics. We know you're listening. We know France is listening. We now know India is listening. Damn it. Uh, Hello, Indian friends. uh, Namaste. Namaste. Um, but 
If you're an international listener and you can't get some of these titles where you live at and everything, well, moviesareusa.net has you covered. Unfortunately, a little spend $50 and get free shipping rule, that's not going to work for you because it is expensive to ship out of the country and or overseas. All we ask is that you pay the exact shipping price and you will get whatever moviesareusa.net has for your heart's desire. So head on over to moviesareusa.net. Proud sponsor of the uh, three-way dance. I almost said the Movies Are USA podcast. Fuck, I am all over the place tonight. Um, <laughs> but proud sponsor of the three-way dance wrestling podcast. Use that checkout code three-way, the word, or the number. But fuck, use them both. You might get 100% off. Fuck, I can't promise that, but it might work. Shit, you never know. You might get lucky. You know, It's like jumping out of an airplane and just start flapping your arms. You never know. You might get lucky. Uh, do not jump out of an airplane. <laughs> you know, and start you lucky. your arms. You yeah. probably news won't crew, get lucky. News crew, the news crew's there. You know, we're at the scene of the crash. Everybody died except one man. Flapped his ass to safety. You never know. Um, but yeah, head on over to movies art. <laughs> Moviesartusa.net. Use checkout code throughway. Save yourself fifty percent on your purchase today. All right, and like I said. We are going to do our role-playing episode now, just continuing battle here. So, Shelby, take it away. All right, you guys got your dice ready? Yep. Perfect. Yep. Yes, uh, people at home, be prepared to hear a lot of this. <laughs> um, this week's going to be interesting because I'm doing two new match types that I've never done before, so I'm I don't know how sure they, this I'm is going to I'm pretty work. sure they end with us getting fucked, I'm sure. We'll see. Um, so the show opens with a highlight video beginning... Uh, showing last week's what happened last week during the closing moments of the ladder match between you two, where Shubs hoisted the belt out of the arena through a hole in the top of the arena and um, offered to take you both on in a triple threat, uh, triple doomsday cage match. <clears throat> Show opens explosions. We see signs of unfuckable, complete <laughs> failures, gold <laughs> bond foot powder. Will this and ever I, end? And can I borrow money? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There's another one. Uh, the announcers, uh, the announcer says, ladies and gentlemen, it's special. This week we will have the first ever Triple Cage Tower of Doom match and hopefully finally decide who will be the first ever TWE, TWD world champion. And a shot Probably of the cage not. hanging from the top of the arena is shown. It's all kind of like mangled together, so you can't really tell how it's going to be set up, but I'll explain that later. Um, it also shows shots of... Uh, both of you walking in, there's like a three kind of panel thing with like artists on one side doing like whatever you do on your walk in. Um, Nico sure and all. kind of, the, yeah, <laughs> sure I don't know if we can show that. On TV. <laughs> um, Nico's off to the right side and the other side is just the parking lot. And the announcer says, uh, now both the artist and Nico have arrived and are in the arena, but no one has heard from or seen the man who is currently carrying the TWD world championship. Notice I didn't say is the current champion, the Shubs. Yeah. Uh, when will Shubs show? Nobody knows, but first we have our first ever tag team match here in the TWD, and it's going to be a gauntlet match to get a shot at the first ever TWD tag team championship. Right now we have our analyst in the back, legless Lily, uh, Lily <laughs> camera pants to the back and uh, <laughs> there's just nothing there. So the camera pans down. It's just this woman kind of like, I don't know if sitting on the floor would be the right way to say it, but she's very low to the ground. Um, she said, thanks. Nameless announcer, man. Now, I am standing by with one of the teams going to start this, Michael Cole and good old J.R. Jim Ross. So you guys are going to have a tag team match, and it was the Spanish announce team, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you were Michael Cole, and, and Nick was Jim Ross, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. okay. So basically, there's going to be a gauntlet match. You're going to have three matches, and, you know, your artist is going to take the place of Michael Cole, and um, um, Nick is going to be... Jim Ross in this match. So you're going to have three matches in a row as Michael Cole and Jim Ross. Does that make sense? I think so. All right. <laughs> so you both walk into frame. Uh, now, gentlemen, can you tell me more about your gauntlet match tonight? Oh, and they God. hand the mic to you. By God. See, myself, Jim, good old JR, Jim Ross, my team with Michael Cole. We're taking on the moniker of the Spanish announce team. Everybody says, oh, Jim. Why you take on that moniker? Well, because they always get destroyed in every main tag team match. 
We're not going to get destroyed tonight. We're going to show you why. We're not going to get destroyed. Myself and Michael Cole, the Spanish announced team. Of all in the name of the fruity delicious, fruity, fruity, fruity scattle. <laughs> uh, Michael Cole, do you have anything to add? What's the, what's the announcer? Legless what? Legless Lily. Legless Lily. Now listen here, Legless Lily. This is not because I don't like you. I like you. Don't get me wrong. You're the right height. But tonight... It's all about the three-way dance, tag team championships, and all these coal miners out here want to see me and good old JR. By God is correct when we become the new tag team champions. Let's get it done, JR. May I remind you that you're not actually winning the belts tonight. You're just having a chance to to wrestle for them at a later date. Oh, no, we are going to win them tonight. (laughs) I don't think that's all the magic. I'm not going to take those belts tonight. (laughs) I'll take those belts by the neck. I gotta take a good old, big old buffalo and take its wings. I'll take that big old thing by the neck tonight. We'll have some chicken tonight. <laughs> All right, so you guys walk. Be ours. All right, calm down, Jr. <laughs> All right, so you guys walk off. Um, you make your entrance. What? Are you guys coming out together? Or are you coming out separately? Oh, he can go by himself. Yeah. <laughs> Doing all that bullshit, he can go out by himself. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, is there anything special during your entrance? Barbecue sauce gets shot over the crowd. <laughs> Everybody's covered in barbecue sauce. Turn up the heat in this arena. <laughs> okay, then JR gets in the ring. The fucking lights go out. White spotlight comes down on the ring. Uh, not the ring, I'm sorry, the ramp. And then from the sky lowers the fucking coal mine box. <laughs> Michael Cole. <laughs> Michael Cole is inside and just cut, lowers down. And then the box opens, smoke comes out. And then, then fucking Michael Cole just emerges from the smoke and walks out. That's fucking Madonna's Like a Prayer just plays. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd is just in awe because they're like, what the hell's going on? And, plus, they're sm- uh, smothered in barbecue sauce now, apparently. You know? <laughs> the whole arena is the ring is yeah. everything. <laughs> Michael Cole just walks past some chick. You know, mm, Tangy. Um, gets into the ring. There we go. There we go. All right. So your first opponents in this gauntlet match, and this this first match is going to be a something singles. Tells me, something tells me this is where we're going to have a little fun. <laughs> this is a straight up tag. You're going to have to tag in and out. Uh, but your first opponents are Taz and Jerry Lawler. Oh no! Okay. So Taz and Jerry Lawler come out and they get in the <laughs> ring. Um, Taz is going to start this match. Who's starting it for Team uh, Sat? By God, barbecue <laughs> sauce, barbecue sauce. <laughs> I, I guess it's I, JR. I guess it's him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so tags are going to work. It's going to basically be like a hot tag every time. You're going to have to get three rolls against um, the person against you, so to speak, to actually make the tag to your partner. Uh, everything else is pretty much going to be the same. So, uh, what do you start with there, uh, good old JR? Immediately go for a tag, and it's for nine. All right. <laughs> You're immediately going for a tag. There we go. All right. Fuck it. I'm just going to say you get the tag because this is early on in the match. All right. Michael Cole's in now. <laughs> I, I, I look confused and smack JR. <laughs> Four. <laughs> this is going to be a good fucking tag team there. Well, he's smacking you, so you might as well roll. Uh, six. Yeah, you, you missed the slap there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you missed that big ass face. All right, so you're. you're All right, I guess I'll fucking try and win the match, I guess, fucko. <laughs> um, you're across the ring from Taz. <laughs> I, uh, d- you know, I'm going to go for the old reliable. I come across the ring, I stare Taz in the face, and then just square up and kick him right in the nuts. Damn it, too. <laughs> Yeah, Taz caught your foot, and he kind of did like a dragon whip around um, and threw you down. And now he's gonna he's gonna go for the Taz uh, the Taz mission 
from that right there. He's just going to go for it. Okay, I'm going to swing my foot back again to get him in the nuts to get out of the Taz mission. All right. Seven. Eleven. He's got you in the Taz mission. <laughs> All, All right. right, so three rolls here. Oh, okay, I got to break it first. Uh, yeah. I, I walk towards the rope to kick back to pin him. All right. Eleven. Oh, I got a six that time. You're out. I oh, actually got me in a pin now, I guess. Yeah, I got him in a pin. Jesus uh, Christ. All right. Uh, seven. Six. That's a one. Nine. Nine. I'll give it to you. That's a two. Yep. Six. Uh, I got a nine again. So that's Did a I say out. six? I meant ten. Yeah, okay. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Taz is now going to hoof. He, he's a little sick of this, and he's already going to hoof you in the fucking nuts. Oh. <laughs> but I uh, I jumped back out of the way. All right. Seven. Uh, Yeah, you jumped out of the way. Yeah, how do you he, like the apples? He's a little dumbfounded, to be honest, that you just jumped out of his – out of his. he's got short legs, though, so it's unfair. How, 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 do, we, how do we do tags? Uh, so it's like three, right? So it's always three. That's how I'm just doing it for now because I haven't figured out a good um, okay. way of doing it. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna against. I'm gonna roll out of the way and head towards my corner to tag good old Jr. All right. Six. Uh, yeah. So roll again. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little bit closer and I reach out for the tag. Ten. Uh, yep, you got that one. One more and you got the tag. And then I leap for JR, smacking his face for the tag. <laughs> Eight. Yeah, you got the tag. JR is in now. All right, JR, what you going to do to fucking. It's a fat barbecue ass in here. Okay, so I get a three. I'm going to attempt to go for like an arm drag. All right, yeah, Taz fucking. Uh... Just kind of stood there for your arm drag. He just, he's not, you can't pull him over. He, he's an actual wrestler and you're just a fat fuck. So. Okay, so the nice is, is six. I'm going to go for a vertical suplex. Hold on, you missed you missed the arm drag, man. You oh, rolled a three, static. you said, right? Yeah, static. Dude. Yeah. You rolled a three, right? You missed the arm drag. So it's uh, Taz's yeah. turn. And Taz is going to go and try and tag his partner. And you got a seven. He got an eight. So he gets uh, a little bit closer. So I'll roll again. Seven. Uh, yeah, you stopped Taz from fucking tagging his partner. And now you have control again. Uh, six. All right, so what are you doing? Get an Irish whip into the ropes, followed by a back body drop. All right, so you successfully hit that. Now uh, Taz is on the ground. Seven goes for the pin. All right. You're 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 getting in the pin, so we're going to go for uh, pin rolls here. Ten. Oh, that's a one? Yeah. Roll again. Uh, four. Uh, that's a two. Come on, fat boy, stay on. Twelve. Uh, that's a three. You have successfully beaten uh, Taz and Jerry Lawler in your first of the uh, gauntlet matches. Congratulations. Uh, All right. <laughs> so your next some match. Skittles, fat boy. You earned them. <laughs> Are you guys doing anything in the post-match to beat down your opponents further? Uh, we're waiting for the next one. Jerry is drowning himself in Skittles. <laughs> I guess that'll work, too. All right, so Jerry Lawler just kind of like jumps off the ropes and throws up his hands because he wasn't even fucking tagged in. Taz rolls out all de all depressed. Uh, it's announced your next match is going to be a tornado match. So all four men will be in the ring at the same time. Oh, and your opponents are going to be JBL and Paul Heyman. JBL oh. and Paul Heyman come down to the ring. Um okay. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um... Since uh, Cole wasn't in the ring before, I'm going to let you start. But you guys are all in the ring at the same time. Um, so, Cole, are you gonna, who are you going to attack and what are you going to do? Oh, me. Oh, my bad. I'm Cole. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. My bad. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a handful of Skittles at Paul Heyman. <laughs> all right. 
Six. Yeah, you threw Skittles. Paul Heyman's like, he's kind of crying, actually. He, yeah, he really right. defeated him just for throwing Skittles at him. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> All right, keep going. Um, then uh, while he's like, you know, trying to pick Skittles out of his eye, I, I spear him down to the mat. Nine. Yeah, that's a spear down to the mat. He's on the fucking, fr- he's on the mat. Yeah, damn right he is. Um, <laughs> then, then I'm going to, I'm going to get up and, uh, just, you know, smack, smack my ass and then hit him, hit him with the Rikishi ass drop onto his chest. All right. Uh, four. Yeah. Before you could do that, fucking JBL came over and like, just kind of kicked you in the face okay. as like you were going I, I, I for that. I wasn't even bothering him. <laughs> That's okay. He's still in the match, <laughs> and he's still Paul Heyman's partner. He doesn't want to get beat. Uh, Jr., this is your time. Uh, are you going to interfere on this? Uh, four. All right. What are you doing? We've done this six times already. You still don't know how to play this? <laughs> Sorry. What's that, Nick? I'm going to run interfere and break up the fucking fall. Well, there's no fall. He just JBL kicked him, kicked Michael Cole off of Paul God Heyman. Damn it, JBL. Okay, I'm going to so- toss JBL over. The- Fucking rope. All right, oh. you managed to do that. JBL is now on the outside. You still have uh, uh, advantage here, and you can do whatever you want to whoever you want. Uh, this is tornado six, tag. Six. I'm gonna go for a plancha to JBL. All oh, right, you 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 fucking plancha onto JBL, no problem. Um, and it's still your turn. Ah, uh, five. All right, what are you doing? Uh, JBL into the steps. All right. You say something, then roll. <laughs> Either way, as long as he knows what he's doing. Uh, you he's smash never. JBL into the steps. Now what? No, I am going to toss him back, back into the ring for the legal man to fucking take him up. Well, you're both legal because it's tornado rules, so you can go. I'm going to toss him back into the ring. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to climb up to the top and do a frog splash. All right. You you are staticky right now, though. I'm going to toss him back into the ring, climb up to the top rope, and do a frog splash. All right. Did you roll already? Yeah, it's a nine. Yeah, it's a nine. All right. You hit the frog splash on uh, poor uh, JBL there. Okay, six. Go for the pinfall. All right, you got the pinfall here. We're going to do three more rolls to win this match. Six. Uh, That's a one. Eight. Uh, That is a kick out. I got a ten. Uh, Or actually, that is actually um, Paul Heyman coming in and and interrupting the pin. Uh, There, Cole. You uh you want to do something? You want to run some interference I'm here? Run up behind Paul Heyman with a schoolboy and roll him up. All right. Uh, six. All right. Yep. You got you got the schoolboy initiated. Now we're gonna roll for pin. Uh, five. Uh, yep. Oh shit! <laughs> My dice. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, damn it! Fall off the table. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Now it disappeared. Where did my dice go? Oh no! It literally disappeared. <laughs> oh no! That's not it. Where did it go? <laughs> oh, my dice literally disappeared. I had it in my sight, and then it went under. Oh, it fell in here. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay, good. I was just about to send you the roller I use. <laughs> no, I mean I have more dice, but it's just a fact. Oh, that that okay. Disappeared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, four. Uh, that's a kick out. Uh, That's actually, I'm in six. <laughs> uh, JBL comes in and interrupts the pin again. He just kind of flips you over and throws you over somewhere else in the ring. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, JR? Six. And? Goes for the pin. On who? <laughs> Paul Heyman, I guess. Uh, okay, you got the pin. Uh, rolling for pin here. Ooh. Roll again. You better roll a 12. Seven. Yeah, no, he kicked out. That was yeah. uh, that was JBL interfering again. Uh, Michael Cole? Um, 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 
Who interfered? Uh, JBL interfered. JBL interfered? Yeah. Uh, come up behind them, low blow. Oof. Uh, seven. No, I'm sorry. Six, seven, eight. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you got the low blow. The JBL is yeah. definitely going down to his knees on this one. That hurt. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> and then um, just push him down to the mat and make a cover. All right. And that is a six. All right, you pushed him down. Right. You're making the cover. Seven. All right, that's a one. Uh, eight. That's a two. And twelve. Oh, that is a three. A very that's emphatic a start, three. Son. <laughs> you guys beat JBL Paul Heyman. You doing anything in the post match? Are you waiting for your Fuck final opponents? Get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your last match is going to be a table match. So you got to put your opponent through the table. You only have to put one of them through the table, not both. Uh, your opponents for this match making their way to the ring, Bobby Heaton and Mike Tanay. Who? Bobby Heaton and Mike Tanay. Did you, like, draw these names out of a hat or something? <laughs> I Honestly, Taz and Lawler, because they were partners of Cole and, and, J, or Cole and fucking JR. Mm -hmm. JBL and Heyman were also partners of Cole and JR. And then I just kind of threw out a random team. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they were from WCW, I guess. Um, anyways, so we're going to start with uh, Nick on this one. There are, no, there are no tables in the ring. So, JR, what are you going to do? Three, um, uh, nothing. Basically, walk to the ring and pretend to do elbow drops to the apron. <laughs> <laughs> so you got out of the ring and now you're walking towards the ring doing elbow drops. Basically, I think Jr. is having another uh, episode here. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, while Bobby Heat and Mike today make their way to the ring, they're going to roll you into the ring. Uh, and then when they get in, Bobby Heenan's going to start stomping you. So go for a roll. 10, I'm going to grab his foot and bring him down to the, bring him down to the ground canvas. You got his foot. You got him um, down to the ground. I'm going to uh, fucking like put him in position for an ankle lock. That's seven. Oh, he, uh. So, who is it? I said Bobby Heenan. Mike Tanay yeah. came in and just clotheslined the shit out of you, knocking you over. Uh, Cole? Um, Tanay, you said that did that? Yeah, Tanay. Come up behind Tanay and hit him with a bulldog. All right. Uh, 11, oh, no, 10. All right, yeah, you hit him with the bulldog. Yeah, and what? Roll, roll his fucking decrepit ass over and go for a pin. Let's, oh, no, I can't pin. It's Fuck. tables, man. Uh, I roll you gotta outside. go get a table. Yeah, I roll outside and go grab a table. All right. You can just grab a table and bring it into oh, the ring. Okay. I'm not that worried about it. All right. I, I grab the table, come back in the ring and set it up in the corner. Putting him through is going to be three rolls. Okay. And then I, oh, fuck. How am I going to word this one? Uh, <laughs> all right. I uh, pick up. Tanay, yeah. Pick up yeah. Tanay and um, uh, set him up for a suplex to put him through the table. All right. All right. Nine. Uh, yeah, you got one. All right. Um, I lift him up in the air. All right. Another nine. Uh, no. What? No, he. No. <laughs> Bobby, Heenan. No. Bobby Heenan came in and chop blocked you at the legs, and he missed the table. I got Unfortunately for their team. <laughs> yeah, I got a 10, buddy. I got an 11. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> JR? Uh, There's a table a set up in the ring now. Rolling a 9, so I take the leftover member of the fucking uh, your team. I Heaton. put him through the table. Team Heaton. I go to put him through the table with the T-Bone suplex. All right. So you won that one. Get another roll. Uh, 10. Uh, I pick him up again. I want to survey to see if there's another table. Uh, on 
lack of no other table, I toss him over the top rope. As I slam. mean, you were putting him through a table, so it's weird that you just stopped. Weren't you? What? Weren't you just putting him through a table? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so you won that role, but you got to win three roles in a row. Oh, well, ten for that <laughs> role. <laughs> All right, so you got that one. One more to put him through. Twelve. Uh, you fucking put Bobby Heenan right through that fucking table. Damn Bobby right. Bobby Heenan has fucking done the ma- the bell rings. SAT, baby! <laughs> You guys won all three of your gauntlet matches. Congratulations. And you will now have a shot at becoming the TWD World Tag Team this Champions when you get a chance. No, you're not the champ no, yet. There are no chance, belts. You do not have belts. This is not I a know, thing. Yeah, here's a belt right here. I got it. <laughs> Skittle uh, shoot out JR's ass. It's a, it's a title belt, and in the middle of the belt is a fucking pack of Skittles. <laughs> and They're fruity, delicious. <laughs> Friday, Friday, All right. Friday, Friday, Friday skittles. So uh before we go into commercial break, we're getting ready for the main event here. Um we're gonna hear from both of you, and we are going to start with artist on your main event triple cage tower of doom match. Um, I don't even know what the match is. It's the Triple Cage Tower of Doom for the TWD World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, so bas- okay. So basically, you know. the goal is going to be to grab the title from the top and make it out the door. Okay. Yeah. Um, so tonight's finally the night that we get our hands on shubs over the last few months or weeks, whatever. I don't know the timeline. Yeah. Um, we have been getting screwed after screw, we've been getting screwed more times than a Taiwanian hooker Don't. trying to get this world title. And tonight, I want to say it finally ends, but it probably won't. <laughs> um, don't know what the match is. They can see that it's a triple tower, triple decker cage match, whatever. But um, you know what? We're probably going to get screwed. So, uh, Nico, uh, see you out there. <laughs> All right. Give me a roll there. Uh, eight. All right. Yeah, they yeah, uh, they, they enjoyed me. it. They enjoyed it. Yeah, I know they did. <laughs> Nico, throughout my life, I've told my family I wanted to be the heavyweight wrestling champion. They laughed at me. They told me, Nico, you must follow along the path of the family business. I told them, no, I must stand out from that. That's been taken away from me. It shall no longer be taken away from me. I don't know if you have to swim for the fishes or be buried amongst the bridge. We'll vanquish whatever foe that comes in front of me and take home the world heavyweight championship. You know we're getting fucked again. <laughs> I rolled 12. 12 holy shit man they're really into what you're seeing even though you're supposed to be the bad guy they want you to win all of a sudden it's pretty crazy they want the heel to win 2023 man okay. sorry uh, that's okay i was wondering what that was in the background yeah sorry <laughs> um so okay we're gonna go into commercial break as they start uh erecting the cage you have any commercials tonight um let's see let me think um, do you like hookers? Fuck them. One eight hundred hookers. <laughs> Fair enough. Is that it? Yeah, uh, that's all I got. All right. <laughs> and Nick's got nothing. No, not all right. tonight. All right. Fair enough. So we come back from the break. The cage is lowering. Basically, what this is is it's a hell in a cell on the bottom. So the whole ring is encompassed, uh, part of the um, ringside areas as well. On top of that is uh, a smaller cell. It only takes up about the size of the ring. How you get from the lower cell to the upper cell is a ladder that's that's just placed in the center of the ring. So you have to climb the ladder, go up, and you'll be on the outside of the 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 second, the middle cell. Then, in order to get up to the top, 
you have to climb up. Uh, sorry, hold on. You have to. This it got a little confusing when I was like, "How the hell does this whole thing kind of fit together?" Um, cage lowers, ladder goes up through the middle to a smaller cage on top with a door on it. You have to go out the door and climb the smaller cage to get on top. Uh, and through the door of the smaller cage on top of that structure. Okay, so you got the hell in a cell. You got the ladder that goes up through the center, goes up into a smaller cage. You go out of that cage through that door. You climb up the side of the cage to get to the top, and the belt is going to be in a smaller cage on top of there with a door. Does that kind of make sense? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. So we have to climb up to the second cage. Yeah. That is the door of the second cage. Yeah. Then climb up to the third. Yeah. To grab the belt, then climb down. Yes. Then you have to climb down and then walk. Come on, Nick, get with it. (laughs) (sighs) It's a little confusing, I know. Uh, About ten that quick, but but we'll get there. The climbing is going to work as the three of three. Um, If there's nobody on your floor, then you just get to climb. So say. If you two start on the bottom and Artis makes it all the way up to the second cage and Nico is still at that bottom cage, he can just then go and climb and get to the top. Um, but Nico will have a chance to get up there as well. So um, as the cage is lowered and locked into place, you see that the shoves is standing on the top in the center of the cage, the, the center of the very top cage holding the belt. And he mouths to the camera, come get it. Um, You guys make your entrances down to the ring. The goal of this match is to go up, grab the belt, and come back down and walk out, be the champion. Mm -hmm. Okay? I got it. So, because Nico did a little bit better on the promos, he gets to start this match. You guys make your entrances. Okay? Bell rings. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Nico? All right, Nick. Uh, four. I'm gonna go for a collar and elbow tie up and try and get the advantage. All right, artist. We're in a, we're in a steel cage and you're gonna go for okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of your uh, collar and elbow tie up and I'm gonna go for a German suplex. <laughs> Seven. I'm gonna get up out of the German suplex and go for an Irish rip to the fucking cage. For 10. Remember, this is a hell in a cell on the bottom. So, like, the cage is pretty far from the ring. I don't give a shit. You could kind of throw him. Yeah, you could kind of throw him into it, I guess. Throw him into it for 10. Or yeah. throw me into, I thought you meant you're throwing me into the second one. I'm like, you're throwing me up? <laughs> that's a, one, that's a hell of a throw. Two, you're, like, basically throwing me to the second level. Uh, You'd have okay. to get a solid 12 to make that throw. <laughs> My God, damn. It's uh, like Superman strength. Um, okay. Um, uh, you know what? I, I don't know if I can do this. Can I just take the shot and move on? I guess, but he still has control then. Let him take it. Okay. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go for a fucking suplex to the next fucking level. For six. Uh, that's not going to make it. To the next level, you got to get a 12. You're wow. saying you're going to suplex him up? Damn right. That's <laughs> like how high so you're going to give me. Count. Wait a minute. But listen, Nick, if, if you were to get a 12 and suplex me up, I'm in the cage by myself and I can just climb on up. Yeah, but, you're, a... <laughs> but you're going to be like all like thrown off and shit. I'm going to get up there before you can just be like, oh, I'm just going to climb up here. Remember, Shubbs is still st- standing at the top of that cell. Yeah. <laughs> and he wants the belt, too. For whatever fuck reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you, you're going to fail at throwing him up that high. You're yeah. going to get him up off the ground, I guess. But, uh... Ah! <laughs> but that's, you me, just... like, going, that's me sailing through the air. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> But because artist is kind of just sitting there not really doing anything, I guess you still have advantage. Are you going to try and throw him up again? No, I, I get This is three. not how I expected this to go. I get a three, so I go for a simple fucking whip to the ropes, and it doesn't really do me much favor. Oh, 
All right, artist, what'd you get? Yeah, fuck. I guess I'll run off the ropes and come back with a bicycle knee. All right. Uh, four. There you go. You beat him. Um, I guess since it's a hell in a cell, I'll go outside, grab a ladder from out underneath the ring, and I'll set it up underneath the door to the second fucking cage and give Nick a leg drop while I'm at it. I mean, this is a hell in a cell, so there is only, like, one actual, like, hole. So you're just kind of setting up the ladder in front of another ladder. If that's what you want to do. Oh, so there's already a ladder set up? Yeah, there's a, there's a ladder that goes from the top to oh, the bottom. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so you don't really need to set up a ladder. Though I could oh, have okay, added okay, that. Okay, that would have been yeah. a good idea. I'll keep that in mind um, for next time. Then, you know what, I'll just give, I'll give Nick a uh, leg drop. There you go. Nine. Four. Yep, successfully hit the leg drop. Now, this is where I'm going to play, throw a curveball at you here. I'm going to pick up Nick, place him on the ladder, start pushing him up. (laughs) Are you going to resist this, Nick? Eight. Seven, apparently not. I was going to say, hold on. You might not want to resist this. I don't know why he's pushing you up. But... I know what I'm doing. Apparently. <laughs> um. Okay, so it's, you're still pushing up the ladder. That's one up the ladder for, I guess, both of you. <laughs> no, I'm not going up. I'm just pushing him up. I, I gave him a Wait. boost, so he's got to finish the climb. Okay. <laughs> so you're just going to stand six. there now? And oh, I guess I gotta, you know, uh, technically, yeah, you're spawning. Yeah. I mean, unless you just okay, unless you're uh, just gonna let him climb, the ladder. yeah, fuck it, let him climb, go for it. All right, so I guess Nick's just on the top, well, not the top, but he's on top of the hell in a cell. No, I get seven, yeah, but he's just letting you go. No, yeah, he's just letting you go. You, you're so you just seven. You, you're up there, stop rolling. <laughs> I go to re- grab the belt. But you're not at the belt yet. You're not at the belt yet. So you, you're at like the second cage. I notice. I notice Nick in the second cage, and then eight. Wait, would you shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> I notice Nico. I mean, in the second cage, and I walk over to the door of the front cage, and I wait. Oh my fucking god, you, you fucking douchebag. <laughs> So I've got eight now. This is not uh, how I expected this nine. to go. You, you don't need to roll. You can literally just come up here now. You might as well. Coming all the way to the top, baby. Yeah, so now you're going to meet Chubbs up there. And uh, he's got advantage because he's been standing there. And he's just going to wall up because now he's pissed because he can see what Artist is doing. And he's just going <laughs> to fucking punch you right in the face. Just a solid straight punch. Nothing you're special. you're down, you're going to have to come through me. And I get nine, and I fucking just, like, basically take it uh, and roll them up. Roll them up? Roll them up for what? What are you doing? Where are we at now? What the fuck is happening? So you got all the way up to the top because Will wasn't stopping you. So there was no point, like, rolling back and forth. So I just tried to punch you. We are on the top. I have the belt on my shoulder, so to speak. Uh, I just tried to punch you, and you beat me. So what did you do? Where do I have to go now, though? Where you got to go all the way back down with the belt. Out Fuck. the door. That's well, why I'm he's standing at the fucking, fucking you at the face. All right. You got to well, start beating the fuck out of you. Like, with right. my fucking foot. Stops right. and whatever. I'm Through seven. I'm, I'm on the ground. You already you already did that. You didn't need to roll for that one. And uh, then another seven. And a fucking another six. <laughs> I don't so know what you're rolling for. Stomping. Picks up the belt. Rolls for. <laughs> okay. Next okay. Down. <laughs> you stomped me. Okay, now I've rolled a ten. What do I do with that? What do you want to do? Start climbing down the cage, baby, with the fucking belt. All right. So you can make your first climb down the cage. It is going to take three. You successfully got one of those rolls. It's going to take three to get down to the metal cage, and then you got to go down to the lower cage. Uh, five. Uh, six. I'm going to stop you, and I'm going to pull you back up 
and I'm going to grab the belt and I'm going to smash you in the face with the belt because I'm very angry. I get seven, eight. Yeah, I smashed you in the face with the belt. And then I'm going to start trying to climb down. So I got a seven. I'm going to try and grab your foot with a fucking seven. Uh, Ty goes to you. So you grab my foot, and I guess I'm assuming you're going to pull me back up. Pull you back up. Go to take the belt again for four. All right, you got hold of the belt. Another nine. I'm going to go advance down the ladder. You get one. You, yep, you got down the ladder. Well, you're not down the ladder, but you Come get on, one down. Bring me that belt. Another eight. Like... All right, again, one more. And another fucking uh, nine. All right, I beat you on that roll, but instead of bringing you back up, I am going to knock you down, and I'm going to land on top of you with a crossbody. And then okay. I'm going to grab the belt. And I'm going to fucking leg drop on top of you with the belt underneath my ass. Well, and I only got an eight off that roll, so. Yeah, you beat me. You fucking moved out of the way or something. You're, you got control now. We got to make it down one more ladder. Broke your ass, so I'm going to toss you into the cage wall for fucking eight. And then I'm going to pick up the belt. Oh, fucking, there's another nine, so I'm going to start advancing down the final steps. All right, so yeah. that's one. And then I get another fucking six. All right, that's two. And nine. All right, you're at the bottom. And now, now you got to get through artist. Because I'm going to strike cheap. artist with the belt in the face for a fucking five. And I'm going to move out of the way, kneeing you in the stomach, snatching the belt in the process. And that would be a five. That's a tie. I'm going to say there's something funny there, and the belt just kind of gets thrown back into the ring. Asshole. <laughs> okay, I've rolled a and, six. And while that's happening, Shubs climbs back down into the oh, ring and course. now has control of the belt. Oh, fuck. However, you are both standing at the door. Okay, so I roll a fucking eight. And what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to s- try and smash Shubs off the door so he lets go of the belt. And I can he's take in, it. He's in the ring. We're by the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, okay. I'm going to fucking boot fuck the door and try and get out. You don't have but the belt. You don't have the belt. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. You need to have the belt. Well, fuck. I'm going <laughs> to fucking... I'm going to go for the belt then. I'm going to go for shoves and try and beat the fuck out of him. All right. <laughs> Which is like a thaz brass and a ground and pound or whatever else. And sure. I rolled an 11. Yeah, yeah, you got me. And you, I'm, got, you got control of the belt. And I'm going to stand right here by the door and wait. Now I roll a 7. I'm going to go for a stomp and then a pinfall. There's, There's no pinfall. pinfall. You gotta you walk out the escape? door with the belt. Yeah, you gotta walk out the door with the belt. Okay, you so I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start boot fucking him for a fucking seven and keep boot fucking him, pick up the belt, and then I get a fucking seven. All right. Um, I managed to stop you. I grabbed your leg and flipped you down, and I'm just gonna grab the belt and I'm gonna walk towards the door, yeah, and bro. then. Will is going, Artist is going to technically have advantage when I get to the door. Because he is just standing there. Uh, yeah. So, go. I'm going to stop this fucking bullshittery right now. Now, I'm going to say, to get out of the door, you are going to have to beat three rolls. You're okay. going to have to win three rolls. I am going to say that. I think that's only fair. because that's You're, kinda trying, you're trying to come for the door, and I'm just going to square up and kick you right in the nuts and take the belt from you. <laughs> Okay. Six. All right. Yeah, you you got the belt. So Yoink. I I say you got to win three. You got to win three, but you got to beat both of us. Do you one? understand what I'm saying? So we both we all three of us roll at one time, and if you manage to go three in a row, you win. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I'm going for the door. All right. Oh, fuck. Nick? 11! Oh, fuck. Nick? Uh, eight. Yeah, you got one. Mm. Roll again, everybody. I'm trying to fucking unfiddle the lock and shit. <laughs> and nine. Yeah. Eight. Yeah, you got one oh. more. Oh, fucking, I'm pulling the fucking lock and shit. I pulled out a bobby pin in my fucking ass, and I'm trying to unlock it and shit. And eight. I got 11. God damn it. Uh, eight. So I just kind of grab the belt and tug it away from you, and then I smack you over the head with it. Then I turn a... around, and I kick in the fucking nuts again. Taking the belt back. <laughs> Seven. Yeah, you got the belt back. Oink. <laughs> yes. All right, again. All right, let me open this fucking door here. <laughs> Seven. Nick. Six. Yeah, you got that one. All right. I'm gonna try and get out this door here. Seven. Two. Yeah, you got that one. One oh, more. Oh, fuck. Here we go. Uh. Okay, my dice fell. I got to reroll. <laughs> uh. Eight. Nine. God damn it. Seven. I grab you again. I grab the belt from you, and this time I give you a kick to the nuts and a shot oh. to the face of the belt. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh. but I, you may kick me in the nuts, but I ducked the, the belt shot. And then I give you a low blow as I fall down to the ground. Seven. All right, so apparently we're both on the ground now. Yeah. Yeah, you want some, bitch? <laughs> if we're both as on I'm the ground, then I think that's Nick's uh, Nick's um, advantage. I go to pick up the belt and that more right. than 11. All right, so we're going to say you're trying to walk out the door then. So 11's your roll for walking out the door. Eight. Ten. Now one more I'm going to walk out the door. Twelve. Two. Eight. Move. And to make it out the door with the belt to get a three. Nine. <laughs> Five. I had a four, so he wouldn't have made we it. We both anyway. we both grab you and just shove you back to the ring. Get your ass back in here. <laughs> All right, who gets control of the belt though, Will? I'm going to reach for the belt and try and grab it. All right. Eight. Ty goes to you. And then you I'm going to the try. I'm going to try and exit. All right. I'm holding my nuts. <laughs> That's a seven. Uh, Nick, you're rolling for this too. Six. All right. You get one foot out. Well, not one foot. Oh, but yeah. Oh, yeah. One. Oh, yeah. Seven. Eleven. <laughs> Uh, ten. <laughs> yeah, we both pull you back. So the belt's on the yeah. ground again. Nick, Nick, and I each ha get to grab for it. Oh, I don't like my roll. I go to grab it and I get a fucking seven. Yeah, you got the belt. Now I go to exit the cage with a seven. Seven. Uh, Ty's gonna go to Nick. What did you roll though? I rolled a four. Oh, let's roll. <laughs> We're going for an eight. Fuck. Three. Yeah, I got an eight as well. Ty goes to Nick. One more, Nick. And as I go to X, cage, we get eight. Eight. Come on, sweetness. Eight. <sighs> on the last roll... You just about make it out the door. You're inches from making it, and Artis pulls you back in. Fuck! <laughs> Artis now has control of the belt. Grab the belt, and I try and roll out the door for the victory. Seven. Yeah, no, I just stomped the shit out of you. I got oh, a 12. God. I just fucking beat the shit out of you. Smack oh, you with legs. the belt a couple times. What'd you get, Nick? Six. All right, I have control of the belt now, and I'm going to try and walk out the front door with a seven. Oh, I don't think so, Scooter. Probably not. Seven. Seven. 
Yeah, we were going to say that you both fucking pulled me back. Get your ass in here. All right, now you guys fight over the belt. <laughs> fight over the belt, fucking 2023. Jesus. Four. To seven. Artist has the belt. And I'm going to kick Nick in the head as I walk out the door. That's a five. Four. Yep, that's you, one. I'm going to walk out with a seven. Six. Yep, one more. And then I make one final leap out the door, grasping the championship. Ten. That's got to be it. Five. And your new and first ever streetway dance wrestling champion artist. Yes. You, you finally time. won the belt. What's that? No, that was it, man. I told you. Wow. Yeah. Told you I had nothing more. Yeah. You're finally the world champion. Do you want a microphone? Do you want to say something? I'll just take my belt and leave before Shubs finds a way to fuck me over again. See you later. Good night. (laughs) All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally crowned our first ever world champion. Thank God. And a tag team (laughs) champion set coming uh, very soon. So no, uh, we already crowned the Skittles tag. No, they're not. They're not the champions. They 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 went. No, they didn't win any belts tonight. So we only have one champion. Uh, Tune in next time. Bye. (laughs) This show closes. God, I did not. Honestly, I expected you both just to climb up and not even like. No, uh, once I heard the rules, fight each like, other. I'm gonna Kevin Nash this one. I'm gonna let Nick, Nick and Shelby do all the work, and I'm just gonna stand right here. <laughs> Fuck. I thought you guys were just gonna climb up and not like not not fight each other to get the belt until you got to like me. Mm-mm. Once you explained the rules, I was just like, I know exactly what I'm doing. That's why I was just like, no, let him beat shit out of me. But then once he was just like, yeah, I'll throw him up to the second level. I'm like, please don't do that. <laughs> now is not a time to roll a fucking 12. So, <laughs> My last please. three rolls were five, six, and seven in that order. That was fucking oh. brutal. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that was our role-playing game right there. If you guys want to listen to previous episodes, like I said, there are some on here. On uh, Amazon, Spotify, and Apple uh, Podcasts, and there's some on YouTube.com slash The Artist We Won. There is a playlist with all of our episodes from episode one to what is this like episode 70 now? We're almost 100. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to, even though we're a little over on time, but that's okay, we're going to play a quick round, a couple quick rounds, hopefully, of 20 questions. This can either be a match or a person or a thing, I guess. It could be a wrestling related thing, I guess. Uh, we all get, tw- we both get. So, like, I'll have a topic, and then Nick and uh, Shelby can divide their 20 questions between them. Um, can we do 10 uh, each? If y'all want. I think so. I think we should do, like, every other one. 10 each. Okay. So, all right, we'll do it like that. So, Nick, what's your first question? I do have a fact of the week, though. Oh, yeah, what's the fact of the week? Oh, uh, that's so the first the time you've forgotten in a while. <laughs> is uh, So the fact that we this week, the WWE Championship itself has changed hands outside of the U.S. eight times. Six of those times were in Canada, once in England, and once in Saudi Arabia. Wow. When did the WWE title change hands in Saudi Arabia? One of the crown jewels. With who? Was it Lesnar? I don't fucking know. Probably. Lesnar or Goldberg? No, oh. Goldberg was the universal, though. Oh, I don't know. Uh, mm. All right. Sh- Shelby, what's your first question? I have my topics. All right, you have your topics. So it's going to be... Um, hmm. Is it a person? Yes. Okay. Nick? Man or woman? Man. Um, have they ever wrestled wrestled for WWE? Yes. Former world champion. Yes. Um, former world champion. Uh, are they American? 
Yeah. Did they win the world championship within the past 10 years? No. Hmm. Um. Think about this one a little bit more. Um. They're American. <laughs> They're American. Are they of Are they of black heritage? No. No. World champion not within the past year. The past ten years, right? Yeah. Not yeah. within the past ten years. Since twenty thirteen. Seamus. Is it Seamus? No. Okay. Not within the past 10 years. He's not within the past 10 years. His first reign was 2009. But he had two reigns. Yeah, and his other one was like 2015, Damn, wasn't it? Fuck off. <laughs> not Seamus. Um, uh, does this person have an H in their name? Yes. Okay. Nick? Was this person champion prior to the year 2000? Prior to the year 2000? Let me see. Let me check the date on that. Hmm. Hmm. Let me find it. Hold on. Where is it? Oh, come on. Don't tell me you're doing <laughs> Well, it just says w- it just says champion, but it doesn't say fucking win. Hold on. So I don't want the origin. God damn it. I'll just say around that time period, 99, 2000. Mm, you're halfway yeah. through your questions, by the way. You're at ten. Uh, was this person known to regularly use a foreign object? Regularly? Yeah, like it was kind of a signature of theirs. No. No. Does this person ever wear a do rag? Yes. <laughs> um, this this is kind of, I guess this doesn't work because I'm pretty sure I know <sighs> who the answer is now. Is it uh, Mick Foley, Mankind, Dude, Love? You're retarded. No. What? Is it Vince what? McMahon? Yes. Vince oh McMahon. my God, Vince McMahon. Shit. He doesn't have an H in his name. Fuck. Yes, he does. No, I'm not talking about McMahon. Oh. Talk about Foley, Mankind, fucking Dude Love. Uh, All right, who's next? Um, I guess I'll go. I only have one of these, by the way. So. All right. That's probably fine. Are you a person? Yes. Um... Have you made headlines for being released from WWE in the past couple of years? No. It's an oddly specific question. <laughs> Are you Orville Brown? Oh my fucking God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We have no need to play this game anymore, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I I expected you to get it pretty easily, but I didn't expect that easy. Like there was literally no clues. 
Probably other than straight. he was a person. <laughs> He's a person, and he wasn't released in the last 10 years. Bam! Orville, Orville Brown. Brown. Die. You know, could have been Terry Funk. <laughs> could have been Mick Foley. Could have been The Rock. No, Orville Brown. Just go straight to Orville Brown. <laughs> okay. I see how this is going to work now. We'll start asking questions because I got the next one, I guess. All right, we'll start with you, Will. Are you a match? A match? No. Are you a person? Yes. All right. Um, are you a female? Yes. Um, are you a former or current uh, WWE talent? Yes. Former. Are you Mandy Rose? No. Not Mandy Rose. Um, bu- 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 are you a former women's champion? In what company? WWE. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Not WWE, no. Um. Hmm. Oh, this is a weird question, but it might help. Are you British? No. Hmm. (laughs) Former WWE talent. Former WWE, not a former WWE Women's Champion. Hmm. Doesn't include NXT, though. But does it? Well, I don't know. That's the thing. <laughs> um, have you... Oh, no, it can't be her. Have you wrestled a match in the last month? Yes. At least hmm. I think so. Are you Australian? Uh, let me see here. Because I'm not exactly positive, to be honest. Uh, let's see. No. No? No. I don't know who I thought it was. Okay. Not Aussie. Um... Are you contracted to AEW? No. No. Oh, okay. I want my second guess. Hmm. <clears throat> Were you on the main roster in WWE? No. Are you related to a famous wrestling family? No. Do you have a lot of tattoos? Um, like covering your body tattoos? No. Are you Asian? No. Mm, I think I know who you're thinking of. Yeah. But no, she's been on the main roster. Oh, yeah, true. You are thinking of me again, weren't you? No, I was thinking Kyrie Sane, actually. <laughs> oh, she was on the main roster, too. But Yeah. Um, they wrestled in the last month, so... Are they in Impact? Uh, as of current, let me see here, to confirm, yes. Oh, boy. Hmm. I know who it is. Do you? Yeah. 
I'll give up my guess if you want to just guess. Is it Deanna Perrazzo? No. What? No, oh, shit. All right, go ahead. Take two, then. Um, I don't know if she fucking worked for WWE. I know she wouldn't have been on the main roster, but she would have been pre-NXT. Um... Uh, how do I word this? Did this person work for WWE pre-2010? No. Okay. And then I get another one, I guess? Yeah, go for it. Uh. Because I can only think of one other person, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to guess it. I'm just going to word it in a way. Yeah, that's the hard part is figuring out the wording, eh? Was this person a knockouts champion? Um, if the answer is yes, then I have a good idea. Yes. Okay. Is this person married to somebody I hate? Um, not to my knowledge, if you hate them. Oh, okay. I thought it was Chelsea Green. We got no. one more question. No. Uh, Shelby, we got sure. one more. Yep. Fuck. Wow. You know what? Uh, is it one more outside of us just guessing? Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm honestly going to give it to you because I have no fucking clue. All right. So um, they're in Impact. They wrestled for WWE. Haven't won the women's championship in WWE. Have won the knockouts championship. Have won the knockouts. They haven't made the main roster in WWE. Is it Killer Kelly? No. Oh no, she hasn't been knockouts champion. Fuck. So the answer. Wait, hold I get on. A final guess. No, yeah, we both point. get final guesses. Oh, okay. I don't yeah, think I'm a... getting it though. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I was pretty sure it was Deanna Perrazzo. I was pretty sure of it, because all that added up to her. I'll let you guess first, Will. Um, uh, she, she was on the main roster. Um... I'm just going to take a stab in the dark and say, uh, Ty of Valkyrie. Yes. Oh, yeah. Ty of Valkyrie. Very good. There you go. I wouldn't have fucking got it. So. <laughs> All right. And I got one more for you guys. I always write down two. So. All right. I actually wrote down three this week. Oh, wow. Shit. Yeah. yeah I've got no more than the one. So that's well, we'll fine. Do, we'll do this last one. Cause we're at two twelve right now. So yeah, that's fine. Anybody want to start asking? Or? Oh, yeah. Man or woman? A uh, woman. Fuck. Um, former uh, WWE talent? Or current? She's wrestled with WWE, but was never con contracted. Is she a current talent? No. Okay. Is she retired? Technically, no. Nick? Um... Fuck. Yes, I would fuck her. <laughs> Is it Bull Nakano? No. But I say it's true. I would fuck Bull Nakano. She has some thick legs. Yeah? Yeah. I don't think I would. Um, 
Okay, I had I had some. Um, did this is this uh, female currently contracted to AEW? No. Okay. Is she currently contracted at all? No. But she's not retired. And she wrestled with WWE but was never contracted. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. No, not Jesus. Um, did, dude, she, dude. <laughs> did she work with WWE prior to 2010? Prior to 2010? No. Like after 2010. Oh, after two after 2010? Sorry. Yeah, that's what I meant. After. Yes. Is it Snooky? No. Mm-hmm. Fuck, whenever you do women, it always throws me because I never remember women, especially like like 2000s, I can usually get women's names, but like 2010 and on, I'm like, done. Um, ooh, I think she technically retired. Um, did you say that they were not contract co- contracted by anybody not right now? Did no, we answer that question? You never said that? Okay. I mean, um, no, yeah, I answered it. They're not contracted by anybody. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Um, have they had a match in the last year? Yes. Oh, shit. Um... Is it Tessa Blanchard? Yep, Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard it is. Damn. Yes. All right, so that was 20 questions here. And other than the movie episode, which uh, I think uh, Shelby has the record on the movie episode at three questions, I now have the record at two. (laughs) The fucking bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I did not expect you to go right towards Orville Brown I A lot just... of controversy in our games tonight We had to uh, debate vacant And now the two question one there You know um, <laughs> uh, But yeah now, episode. I know, now we have to head on to our Vintage pick of the week Which is usually something we think you should seek out and watch Whether it be a match, a promo, commercial or Something that we think you should watch So uh, Shelby, what's your vintage pick of the week? AWA Russell Rock 1986 for the AWA World Heavyweight Championship. Stan Hansen versus Nick Bockwinkle. Huh. Fucking love me, Stan Hansen. He just fucking wrecks people on the way to the ring. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> just don't get in his way. Fuck. It's like, uh, have you ever seen Lance Archer when he was in New Japan? No. Oh, man. He'd fucking go into the fucking crowd and he'd start like fucking throwing chairs around and pushing people out of their seats and shit while like Davy Boy Smith is just like standing in the ring going like what the fuck are you doing man <laughs> he'd go like all around the ring and do that it was fucking hilarious <clears throat> Nick uh, so my bench pick of the week is Jim Cornette's story of the car that ended up on his fence uh, from the Jim Cornette experience it is a pretty good story that's fucking hilarious <laughs> <laughs> mine is mine is something not entirely wrestling related, but kind of is. Mine is actually from a stand-up comedian known as uh, Dan Black. He uh, he does this bit about like how wrestling is better than basketball, and it's just like his friend. I'll give you guys the gist of it. You guys can go look it up. But uh, it's called Dan Black: uh, Why Wrestling Is Better Than Basketball, and it's like. Uh, his friends tell him like basketball is so much better because LeBron is like changing the game. And his argument is just like, why? Because he's scoring more points than the last person who was good at basketball. Now, if LeBron ever ripped off his Jersey and showed that he was playing for the other team, then dunked on his own goal and hit the ref with a chair and then was wearing a snake. Then yeah, I'd be more into it. 
This guy, so I just looked it up. Is this guy actually a wrestling fan? Yeah, I mean, judging from the bit that he does in this, it's pretty good. He's you know, like another one of his bits was just like, um, he was just like, oh, you never know who's going to win. Uh, uh, you already know who's going to win wrestling. He was just like, yeah, but I already know who's going to win the NBA finals. It's either going to be the Lakers or the Golden State Warriors. You know who won the main event of WrestleMania 31? Somebody who wasn't even in the match. <laughs> Can you imagine watching him? I can't remember the boxer names he used. So I'm going to just put in different boxers here. But he was like, can you imagine watching Evander Holyfield versus Mike Tyson in the Colorado Avalanche one? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great fucking bit, man. It's so fucking good. He has uh, a point. <laughs> no, like, can you imagine watching like Pacquiao versus like somebody and like fucking the Green Bay Packers win? <laughs> like how awesome would that be? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that used as an argument before. <laughs> That's fucking you incredible. Have to see it. It's so good. I can use that next time you. somebody says something. Yeah, he, he does it better than me, but check it out. Damn yeah. black, my wrestling is better than basketball. It's so good. So. <laughs> <clears throat> There's the bell. We went long tonight. Join us next week. <clears throat> Excuse me where we will review one of our picks for um, a vintage Royal Rumble. Uh, Nick has selected Royal Rumble 2005, a.k.a. Quadamania. Um, I have selected Royal Rumble 1993, and we have... Um, I think I have my pick. I think I know what you're going to pick, but what is it? Royal Rumble 1999. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to uh, pick 92. No, I'm going to pick 99 because that's the one with... Um, or am I thinking 98? No, nope, 99 is the Rock and Mankind match, the I Quit match. Oh, the one that yeah. you're like five stars, but Charlotte and fucking Ronda get fucking one or whatever you gave it. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So be <laughs> sure to stay tuned this month for um, Royal Rumble month, apparently. And uh, Hell yeah. Royal yeah. Rumble is the best pay-per-view. It, hands it, down. It's a, yeah, it's one yeah, of Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for us here. Cause we went a little over on time here, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So until next time, guys, I'm the Arizona one for Nick and Chubbs. Be breezy. <laughs>